Welcome to Pin the Q Productions. If you are interested in the culture of the fire service and keeping tradition alive, you have come to the right place. Now sit back and relax with your brothers and sisters and enjoy the show. Be sure to like and subscribe on all social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. For more information on Pin the Q Productions, visit www.pintheq.com. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Ray from Pin the Q. Uh, today we're with Captain Eckert from Camden Fire Department, and we have a pretty cool opportunity to check out his collection of antiques and stuff from the, he's collected over the years. So we're going to talk and we're going to go through some stuff and see what he's got. Cool. Thanks for uh, coming to my house. I pulled some stuff out. This isn't even a, a tip of the iceberg, but my wife doesn't let me display much due, due to us living in a shoebox. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we got what we have. But, uh, yeah, so um, I've been collecting since I've been a kid. Uh, you obviously just met my parents. My mom was my biggest collecting influencer. So some stuff I've had for a while, some stuff I've just gotten. So we can go through it and you guys can check it out. Um, these are um, Bob Bartos prints. And they actually, I bought four of them. Uh, I kept two. I sold two, kept two. The other one is in City Hall, locked in the room. Uh, before COVID, I had some of my uh, collection on display. It was the department's 150th anniversary. So uh, through my union, they asked me to like, come display some stuff. But... It's all like locked in because I keep city halls like closed because yeah. of COVID or so now like when you say that these were hanging up in city hall, there's no other replicas of this. Like this is now. Like a, so well, this one wasn't the, the the one that was there is this is actually from Philadelphia. It's a Philadelphia fire. Okay. This is in a Camden fire. Um, but Bob Bartos, um, you know, he did a black and white red all over book, uh, tin men and or tin helmets, iron men, but a Philadelphia book. Uh, he's Delaware Valley based uh, freelance fire photographer for years. He now lives in um, North Carolina, but um, he's a He's, you know, in his uh, late 70s, but he's very spry and still gets out there. But, um, yeah, these, these actually hung in Nat Alexander, which is like a fire equipment store. So, you know, anybody that's before the internet, you had to go to the fire the store itself. Yeah, to, to like, physically go to the yeah, store. Yeah, go to the store and get get the shit. So, um, when I was a kid, they always just caught my eye. And they were they were hanging right in there. And I just said, you know, I, I kind of beat the guy down my entire, you know, probably yeah. for like 10 or 15 years. And... So the like fact a, that like now you have this like this is in your possession like this is your you is. own this is that like that how does that like does it's, that mean a it, lot to you yeah I, I mean I I enjoy having it I, I wish obviously I could display all of my stuff but uh, you know my kids would probably break some of it and my wife would kill me <laughs> but no it, it's cool I, I just think it's cool how I, I finally like wore the guy down after like fifteen years and he ended up selling the business Persistence. and he called me like he he legit remember my name I wrote my number down he called me and I went and got him so I got this and another one. I sold two more, um, and I'm just waiting to get them framed. After COVID's done, we're going to get them framed because they're, they're starting to fade a little bit. And that, that, yeah, that concerns me. Right. But, yeah, I mean, I'm sure you might – maybe in one of the books you can see um, the original – or, you know, a print of the photo, but this is a blown-up version. But I just think it's cool. you got the you know, ground ladder, the heavy streams going. That's it's, cool. it's Philly. Um, yeah, it's cool. Uh, All right, so let's keep, let's keep moving down. Let's show, like, what other – you have a lot of antique photos, which is really, really. I'm cool. really into photos. I'm, I'm photos. Photos are kind of like my uh, my guilty pleasure. So I just think it's a, it's so cool. And you know, it, uh, the one cool thing about the photo thing is, especially on Instagram, there's a couple couple guys, some of the older fire photographers that have, that were shooting photos in like the '70s and '80s. They're starting to like pop up pages. Yeah. Like Start Water has got to be the best photo thing going on, on Instagram. There's a couple other uh, New York City buff yeah things on yeah, there. There's so a lot of history that's coming to the forefront. It's cool, man. So like, you know, I love I love that shit. But, you know, the older photos, you know, my time period for when I wish I was a fireman was the, <laughs> yeah. was the you know, the Late 70s, 80s. you know, the 70s all the way through the early 80s yeah. and the 90s and retire. But the time that I'm really into is, you know, uh, post-Civil War America okay. into the early 1900s. And that's what I like collecting. So... Um, this is actually Camden piece. This is uh, Engine Four on Vine Street, and um, I just, I think the it's faded. So I did get like museum glass put in it. I always get museum glass, but uh, they got a border collie something right here. And I would date the photo like 1870s at some time. Um, so I, I, I got I got this from uh, there's a there's a there's a couple people that are pretty heavy in collecting in the area, and um, I went 
to his house and he said I'm never invited back again because I asked to buy everything when I was there. But I did I was able to leave with this. Yeah. So I actually so now now pick my like let me pick your brain because you're the history buff. So those I'm looking at this photo, right? The doors back there, those are like the old horse drawn characters, yes. right? Like those are the old yes. barn style pop open, horses yes. coming out. So this probably you can't tell because it's fade, but these guys are the officers, probably a captain and probably a lieutenant, and that's the company. Yeah, you, the hatch is different. Right? Yeah, the firehouse is actually still standing. It's really? still there right now. It was like a daycare, but it's actually for sale. I just found that out yesterday, which is interesting. We'll have to talk to my wife about that later, but see if we can make now. She's she can kill us. But <laughs> no, um, I did when I got the photo. I got museum glass, and I went and got a picture of the, the photo out front of the firehouse. But this is back when you lived, like when you were a career fireman, you lived at the firehouse yeah. seven days a week. And you know you got you got a few hours off to go be with your family, and that was, that was your thing. So you know this was Engine Four company photo. Wow. So uh, yeah, original frame and everything. I put new matting and got museum glass. But that's pretty cool. Yeah. So keeping with that with that theme, I want to skip that for right now because okay. I want to go back to that one. But I want you to, to talk about these because okay. these are these are really cool and there's a lot of history right here. So uh, yeah, so these obviously high eagle helmets. Uh, so I'm from Collingswood, New Jersey. That's where I got my start in the fire service, and I never saw a Collingswood high eagle ever, other than a picture that's in the second floor bar of the firehouse. And there are not any, not too much anymore because face before Facebook Marketplace, um, eBay was hotter than it. It was yeah. Now. So, was but there was a lot of competition on eBay. So I did have I did have somebody who from the West Coast that would, I guess he's originally from the East Coast. Him and I were just like, and that's where you, that's when eBay back in the day used to be able to see who you're bidding against. And oh, all that's right. Oh yeah, yeah. you don't get like yeah, yeah, yeah because like oh yeah, like it's not like that anymore. You don't get to see who it is. Yeah. So the dude would like bid me or whatever, try, try to screw things up for me, and uh, he sent me a text message at like three in the morning, cause he's on West Coast time. And for whatever reason, I was up. I think I was coming back from a run, I was working. He's like, go on eBay and type in Collins of Fire, have a nice day. And I typed it in, it was $800, buy it now. I was like, click, done, bought it. So um, I actually had it shipped to the firehouse and I opened it in the original firehouse where it's from. I don't know, cause I'm that's weird. That's cool. No, I'm weird like that. Yeah, but that's cool. Um, yeah, but it's history, it's history of, like coming back to it. Yeah, so Collins of Fire Department, or c company number one, so Collins of Fire Company number one is like 1894. Ish, they probably they probably got their store 1893, 1894. They became incorporated 1895. So this is from that time period. It was actually made in uh, Philadelphia. So everybody made leather helmets back in the day. It wasn't just cars or Gratacap. There was, it was this was actually a leather. Um, it was hat makers, right? Like hat, hat makers. This was actually a bicycle tire company. So they only made like a limited number of helmets. I want to say 24, 25. And I've been offered some money for this helmet because somebody does have. Most of the helmets in that collection, really. Yeah, but I'm also, I'm sorry. No. This, this is this is priceless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got that. Um, this I got two years ago at Allentown uh, Spring Fall Fire Flea Market, whatever you want to call it. Citizens Volunteer Fire Company. That's in the Kramer Hill section of Camden. So uh, 28th in Cleveland is where, where their firehouse was, and um, so that's probably it's date on the back 18 1891 is you know about that this is probably a kid's helmet though so same thing with this so this was definitely like a kid this was probably like a 11 12 13 year old boy this was probably a six or seven year old boy paper mache uh same company citizens fire company um so this is this, this is leather but the rest is paper mache parading the volunteer fire service you gotta remember back in back in post civil war it wasn't all about firefighting yeah it was more like a social club and gathering and parading and you know, uniformity yeah so you know and that's why like the, like the cabinet cards that i collect i post a lot of photos of the cabinet cards because that's like cabinet photos are my my extreme guilty pleasure <laughs> but you know you, you had your like you had a kid and you had him dressed up yeah you know and, and that's what you would do you would do it like and with the you would horns go to your, and the high hats yeah it was, it was, it was like prestigious show it's kind of like a status thing yeah you're a member of the local fire company but you know, you take New Jersey and, you know, you're a Jersey boy and, you know, all the small cities, you know, from, you know, Salem on up. Like, you know, you got Salem, you got Camden, you got uh, Vineland, Millville, Atlantic City, uh, even Ocean City. Ocean City, New Jersey just started a uh, history page. It's awesome stuff on there on Instagram. And uh, Camden, Trenton, uh, Newark, Patterson, Union, yeah. all these. But in the 1800s, they had like, like take like Camden, for example. I mean, they had 14, 15 volunteer fire companies in there, so. Yeah. Yeah. 
So there's a lot of stuff in there. Like yeah, I know by me, we have uh, the Newark Fire Museum. It's like right across the bridge yeah. in the Ironbound section. And that's, it's filled with history like yeah. that. It's really so cool. I mean, like any, anytime I can grab something, you know, anything that catches my eye, I grab it. And you know, that's, that's what I do. So awesome. uh, yeah, I, I mean, these two, I ha actually, I got an assist on this one and I got an assist on this one. So, you know, it, it's the, the one good thing that the guys who do collect, who do collect specific things, we kind of like, we kind of watch each other's backs and know who's, uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I know you collect that, so like I'll shoot you a text yeah. or vice versa. So there's a there's a small community of us that kind of, uh, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. So now, talk to me about this fire engineering thing. Uh, <laughs> that's my door. Uh, yeah. So this is um, it's December 2013. This was um, actually my first fire uh, when I was assigned to Squad Seven. So I got laid off in January 2011. And uh, I got brought back in, it was right before July 4th, so the end of June. And um, the only way I remember that is because remember they did the tiered pension thing? Yes. With the benefits? I got tier right three. I got, well, I was able to get back right, right before, before that. that. So I jumped, I was still tier one. Oh, man. That's and huge. Uh, so, yeah, this is a fire on Park Boulevard. It's a basement fire. It actually got, we actually got dispatched for a grass fire. It came in as grass. And, um, yeah, it was a base of fire. You know, one all hands. You know, I just you can't see me. You actually, you can see my foot. If you really, <laughs> I mean, it's still. I, I, I just thought it was it's cool. Still that cool. Was yeah, I mean, when so. you have, when you know that that's you going into that building and you're on the cover of fire engineering. Like, that's yeah, it was like, pretty neat. I, that's like a moment. Like, that's like an I made it moment. Yeah, my mom did that for me. So I, you know, she uh, she got that done for me. That's awesome. Yeah, I used the same framing guy too. Arts Plus in college. But that's awesome. Yeah. So I want to save these back three for the last because these okay. are just absolutely crazy. But now I want you to take me through some of these. So on the table here is a bunch of different shields, obviously from your career, from, uh, is it all Cam? Oh no, no the Collins Collins in there, front, yeah. right? So um, I want you to take me through like your journey real quick, just through your shields. And just like, like just so you can see the difference from your probation shield to like, it, it's really cool to see the, the progression. Yeah, so I, uh, I, I'm from Collinswood, uh, born and raised. I started there as a junior 14. And uh, so I don't have that helmet. I've tried to get it, but I don't have it. So, uh, you know, I, I was only a, a volunteer member, like a legit Fire One certified volunteer member for like a year and a half. And we got hired, they did like firefight. We took over the AND once. So they hired like seven guys to do like, you know, EMT firefight, fire yeah. EMT program, which a lot of people do. And I got picked up as one of them. Um, so this is my, this is my shield from Collinswood. Uh, I've always, you know, kept that. Yeah, you gotta keep that. Uh, you know, I keep my shields, I'm, the, I'm an extremely, an emotionally nostalgic person. <laughs> so, listen, if you're a fireman and you haven't kept every single shield that's touched your helmet, then you're doing something wrong. Yeah, I, I, I have my, like, my junior member one. I would love to get my junior helmet. I, I, I would love to know where that is. But That uh, was one of those things. I didn't care if I got, like, charged or what I had to pay. Yeah. It was coming up. It, it, it was like a Metro helmet, too. Like, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, then I got my uh, my probationary front from Camden. Um, you know, I just did the dates and the company. So you didn't have the blood too. seal it? <laughs> now, uh, I did have to give them, they did issue me this, so I did have to give them one to keep this. They yeah, did have this. The replacement. And I was, when I when I gave it to the, um, the chief, I was so worried that he was going to forget that it was mine, that I wrote this on the back of it. <laughs> so I'm like, because I wanted to make sure I got it back. Um, and then from there, I, I was at Fireman Engine 9 for about four and a half years. That's my front from there. Uh, I drove a lot there. <laughs> Uh, then you're gonna go to my favorite one. My ladder one front. Uh, I was ladder one for uh, like about ten months, ten months, and uh, I went to uh, and I got laid off. So, so uh, that's you were at ladder one when you got laid off. I was a fireman at ladder one when I got laid off. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then when you came back, that's when you went to squad seven. I was actually a floater. Um, I floated for uh, on the third platoon for. The summer, okay. Basically, the summer, and you know, uh, whoever was off, that's where you went. So that's how that worked. Gotcha. Um, yeah, this. I mean, these are gifts. Uh, my one of my one of my dearest friends, Bobby Stalters, got me this when I was hurt. Um, the guy doesn't make fronts anymore, but every once in a while, I put the teeth. This, this is that's, this is handmade. This, yeah, this thing that's is, legit. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. So uh, you know, I, I I always keep it on the twelfth cone. Um, and these are from uh, Will Blinsky. Well, this is from Will Blinsky. He sent this to me when I was hurt. Um, he's Goldie Furnace on um, Instagram. And, uh, you know, just a little spirit booster. And this is actually his son. 
His son, Chase, painted this. He's wow. getting into the game, and he's he's got to be. Oh, I don't know his age. I don't want to say his age wrong. He's got to be like eleven or twelve, and uh, he's got some game. Yeah, so I good. had to buy it because I want to say that. I mean, he, he numbered it. Yeah, yeah, he numbered it. So he's got number nine. So like you know when he's all yeah freaking fracking famous, I'm like, yo, dude, I got number nine. I want to buy it back. Collectible. You know what I mean? So I need some beer. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. No, I'll that's never, no. game, man. Yeah, it's cool. So I, I just think it's cool that the father and son and his dad, I would never get a hand painted front from anybody else in the world. So I just think it's cool to find something. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so there's some, some of the fronts I have. I don't have, I mean, I have, I got a bag of fronts. Yeah. We can, we can go through my fronts. <laughs> that so we talked, before we were on camera, we talked a little bit about the 12 comb. And like, that's, it's rare because, I mean, even when you said 12 comb, I was kind of like, yeah, what, what is that? And there's there's some pretty cool significance to like what that helmet is. So I, I this was a, um, I, I I may or may not have been coming home from the bar at like two in the morning and had a few in me. And I usually whenever I wake up, I go on eBay. I'm, I'm a weird guy like that. So I have my helmet saved my stage searches. I go on there and there's a twelve cone helmet. It's natural with a high eagle front. It's got a high eagle and it's got a high eagle front. And it, it was had a guy's name on it. And his family was actually selling it. He retired from Carnes in Clifton. He was a helmet painter for a career, whatever it was, 30 years. So I bought it, buy it now. It was, I believe it was 800 bucks. I bought it now. I, I've heard of 12 combs, always wanted the 16. I don't have one. Anybody selling one, let me know. Um, but I got the 12 and uh, I called Pete the next day when I woke up. I, he probably woke up to like missed calls from me because I'm like, Pete, Pete, Pete. Because I had it sent, before I even talked to Pete, I had it sent to his shop. And um, shout out Pete from Ragtop. Yeah, for, to Ragtop. And I, uh, I had the, I had the, the finial, the high eagle finial taken off. I had the retro brass taken off, and I had it painted white. So, you know, if I ever, so when you become, become, if I ever, chief. if I ever do become a chief officer, <laughs> I will try my goddamnedest to wear that helmet. That's awesome. Uh, but yeah, there's, I forget the number that was made. It was under a hundred. I don't want to misquote it because. But I, there is paperwork on Like I got all the legit paperwork and it says it's the last 12 cone ever made. Yada, yada, yada. It's behind the wall, behind us and all the rest of my boss stuff, but I haven't saved. So, uh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and then explain the shell a little bit. Yeah, so the shell, uh, this is this is a re recent acquisition. I got this a few months ago, probably earlier in the year. I was at, uh, I was lecturing in, um, uh, where was I? I was in, uh, I'm blank. Uh, doesn't matter, but I was there, and um, one of the one of the Elkhart guys, who I know, he's like, I got something you might be interested in. And I was like, What's that? He's like a helmet. I was like, Really? So you know, he piqued my interest. So he shows me. So he went. You know, he's been in the fire equipment game for a while. And back when Corners was in Clifton, he was at the factory, and it was just handed to him. <laughs> like, here, take this home. So this is a shell. It's not cured or anything like that, and uh, like doesn't have the impact liner in it. I've never, I mean, I've seen one in pictures, like the picture of all of them lined up and yeah. the crooked. I've never held one. So he's like, yeah, man, just give me 200 bucks. I couldn't get the money out of my pocket fast enough. Yeah. And uh, I actually flew home and this was my carry-on. Uh, it's and it's I a actually, cool piece. I got a picture with the TSA people because they never saw like anything weird like that comes that. through. They get a picture with it. So I'm like, I'm holding it like this with like all the TSA people <laughs> in, the, uh, in the airport. So, uh, yeah. It was definitely it. pretty cool. Yeah, it was a Georgetown Fire Exposium. Exposium. Gotcha. So, yeah, it was oh, the uh, Kentucky one. You Kentucky, yeah, Kentucky. I want to say Tennessee. I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. I, I, I feel bad. It's not that I forget you, but uh, yeah. So um, yeah, I got it. I don't know. I, I brought it home. My wife's like, great. Yeah, another piece. <laughs> All right. So then we're gonna breeze through these last three quick items. This one though, obviously a little near and dear to my heart. Explain yeah, so, this picture. Um, this was. Uh, you know, I hate to. I hate to. You know, everybody's gonna go to Allentown. So, uh, you know, I got an Allentown Fire Flea Market probably, I want to say eight years ago, maybe, it might even be 10 years ago. Um, I was walking through and the frame caught my eye. Um, you know, my mom being a picker and a junker, this the frame, the age, yeah, frame, the frame caught my eye, the and I could yeah. barely make out the guy because it's a pastel painting. So all the pastel over the years was on the glass. I could barely make it out. And, you know, I kind of got through it and, you know, he's like, how, like, how much do you want? He had 500 bucks on. I'm like, I'll give you three. And I took it home and I took it to uh, my guy in Collinswood, Arts Plus, and we pulled the frame off. And I was like, oh 
Yeah, my God. You struck gold. Yeah. So the guys, it actually says on the back, it says William Clark, Deputy Chief, and it says his years of service. Um, and then on his wrist is yep. his his valor awards. One of them is the Board of Benefit. Yeah, exactly. Because so, that's back then, that's the use. You wouldn't have any on the because yeah. you had the double. Uh, but you can see this. Rest. Somebody had this. There was no back on it, really? which was insane to me. And so the no back on it caused it okay. to get hit right there. But um, yeah, I love this piece. Um, I used to collect a lot of New York City stuff. But, you know, I, I got rid of it over the years. And this is this is the only thing I have left, and I'll, I'll never ever get rid of it because I just think it's so. No, this is new value. It's so cool. So um, it actually was hanging in my dining room, but uh, I lost that. No, it's it's a cool piece and uh, pastel too. It's just, I don't know yeah. it pops. I just something about it, and uh, I just think you know there's a there's a, I I reached out to a hash hanging after uh, uh, Frank's uh, podcast with him, and uh, him and I went back and forth a couple times. And we can't figure out exactly, we like, we'll try to try to nail down, like, his assignments, because, you know, he's got a lot of stuff, so we're yeah. going back and forth, just trying to figure it out. Um, and I've had offers on it, I just, I'm not interested in it. That's, I mean, that's, um, that's my favorite thing here. That's, this, the amount of history in that, and just the, that is incredible, to find that. I it was, that. it was, and it was leaning face in. <laughs> the frame caught my eye. That guy had no idea what he had. He had no idea what he had, man. Yeah, unless he didn't want to get rid of it. I don't know. Crazy. Yeah. All right, so then let's talk about these last two pieces, and then we'll wrap this up and we'll go outside. Um, yeah, so these are I these are panoramic photos. I'm a big uh, panoramic photo guy. I love it. I think it's just like... So this is... These are both out of Reading, PA. Um, again, I got them all. Now, I got these at... I got this one at... Pump primers in Harrisburg, and I get this one at Pump primers in Harrisburg, but like three years apart. Okay. So I rolled up on this one. Again, it was like this. <laughs> and I just grabbed it and I was like, hello. So it's this is Susquehanna Fire Company, and it's not dated, but the uh, it's it's right, it, it does say writing PA and you know, the photographer. And I would date the photo late 18. 90s ish but the coolest thing about the the photo is not the fire i mean the fireman's fantastic all their high eagle homes and stuff but i like the horse thing. there's a horse and carriage up here oh, yeah. and all the people up on the bridge just so cool you know i again yeah, i trains in the back i could talk about photos all day long now explain time. why some of these guys aren't wearing um, so from my research the guy's not wearing helmets and with the the uh, shoulder plates are vietnam or not vietnam jesus god uh <laughs> civil <laughs> war veterans so, you know, you got some Civil War guys up here, which I think is pretty cool. So, that's yeah, just that's, that alone shows the age and history behind yeah, it. That's, again, I got it. It's, it's the frame it was in, but it was the mat was in bad shape. And I always try to go get museum glass on that stuff. If you have old photos, that one wasn't in museum glass and look at it faded over the years. So, that's why I try to museum glass shit up. It's expensive, but it's worth it. Um, this one is Rainbow Fire Company in Reading. Rainbow must have been a very popular fire company because there's a lot, you, you do come across a lot of rainbow so, stuff. So, um, but if you go to Reading, they have that, the Oriental looking building. I don't know exactly what it's called, but apparently that's the bottom of it. I'm not sure. I don't have a lot of research on the, on the, uh, on the photo, but, uh, again, it's, uh, definitely 18 something, probably 1880s, 1890s. That's pretty stuff. That's a lot of history right there. Yeah. That's just some of the stuff, uh, you know, I could go all day. I got pictures of the yin yang, but that's some of my collection. A lot of it's at my parents' house. <laughs> yeah, your mom was telling us about all your bins and helmets. And I dropped some stuff yeah. off there. Um, you know, anything just sees my eye. I, I, you know, I, I went on. I like force. I like old school force blanchy tools. Um, this is the first time that I ever bought um, when I was a kid. I was probably eight or eight, seven or eight at a yard sale, and I believe I paid ten dollars for it as a kid. And it's a Philadelphia helmet. I kept it for. I have no idea why I kept it. And then a friend of mine got assigned to Engine 5 as a lieutenant. And I just, I'm like, don't I have that helmet? Yeah. So I dug it out and uh, I shot him a text and I sent a picture. He's like, whoa. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. That's I'm like, so I got, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to send it his way. If, I, if that was me, I, I want that front and center and whatever I did. Yeah, I'm definitely, so it's definitely going to, I'm going to, it's going to make the transition over to, to Philadelphia to, uh, to a guy who's actually assigned to that company in the position, I think that's pretty. That's awesome. I'm I'm, I'm about that, but you know, it's gotta respect the history. History, sure, man, sure, sure, sure. So, 
He has just a little tip of the iceberg. All right. So there you go. There's Captain Eckert's private collection. You got to see a lot into his personal life and all the history and antiques that he's collected over the years. And like I said, this isn't even all of it. This is just some of it. So uh, I'm I'm lost for words at just some of the history that we can see here and just some of the like amazing stuff you've been able to to acquire over the years. So.